Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Iran. In the name of God, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Holding this important and time-limiting, I'm here today at the meeting of the Security Council to share with you my country's positions regarding the important developments in West Asia, including the developments in Palestine and Gaza. Now I would like to present my country's position and a statement in Persian language. Mr. President, over the past month, the Security Council has held several meetings to deal with the various types of the war crimes and genocide by the Israeli regime against Gaza, which despite the adoption of three resolutions and a press statement requesting an immediate ceasefire and the extensive and unrestricted delivery of aid to the people have yielded no practical result. I repeat, no practical result. At the same time, during the same period, the Israeli regime has continued to kill and destroy with the utmost brutality, resulting, among other things, in more than three, 4,000 Palestinian civilians getting killed, mostly women and children, and the injury of tens of thousands of others. The forced displacement of the population of Gaza and deliberate destruction and of more than 70% of the residential areas and infrastructures, including the vast majority of hospitals. They are just examples, some examples of the vast destruction for which the Israeli regime is responsible. Mr. President, a missile attack on the 1st of April on the Iranian diplomatic premises in Damascus showed yet again that this regime does not hesitate to violate the fundamental principle of the immunity of such places and people, as well as the known and well-recognized Vienna Conventions. As the majority of the members of the Security Council declared at the April 2nd meeting here, the attack was a clear violation of the Charter of the United Nations International Law and the Vienna Conventions. And thus is strongly condemned Regrettably, the Security Council had not taken any action during the past month to our official and repeated request to prevent further attacks by the Israeli regime on Iran's interests, centers, and military, official military advisors of Iran who were there to fight against terrorism and did, did not, and due to the unfortunate and completely irresponsible behavior of the United States, the UK, and France in response to this illegal attack failed even to issue a mere statement containing a simple condemnation. Mr. President, no member state, I repeat, no member state will remain silent in face of such a brazen and serious military attack on its embassy, which is considered a symbol of its sovereignty, as well as the killing of its legal, official, and diplomat agents. The Saudi Republic of Iran, which until recently had shown considerable restraint against other terrorist missile attacks, bearing in mind the dire situation in the region and willing to give the role of the United Nations a chance to prevent the escalation of the conflict, was faced with the continuation of the White House's green light granted to the Israeli regime, as well as the continued inaction of the Security Council in preventing these attacks. In preventing the attacks by the Israeli regime. Therefore, it could no longer be patient against the attack on its embassy and the attack on its sovereignty. Therefore, Iran's 
military attack on April 13th was first and foremost necessary because Iran had no other option. Secondly, it was carried out in response to a series of attacks and recurring aggressions by the Israeli regime in form of missile attacks on Iran's interests, especially on our embassy in Syria. Thirdly, it took place in the fulfillment of Iran's right to legitimate defense under international law. Fourthly, it was conducted by observing the criterion of non-aggression to civilian people and places. And fifthly, it focused solely and only on two military bases of the Israeli regime, which had been used in the attack on our embassy. And therefore, it was completely limited and proportionate in terms of scope and military requirements. Moreover, since it was completely clear that the, some of the supporters of the Israeli regime who are unrelenting and absolute partners in his carnage in Gaza would assist the regime in neutralizing the Iranian attack, a wide, it was, therefore, our legitimate defense was done in a way to achieve our goals. The attack by my country's armed forces was limited and minimal targeting only military bases and was in line with the international law and the principle of non-aggression against civilian areas to ensure proportionality and accurate execution to achieve the goals. Mr. President, I emphasize again Iran's legitimate defense and countermeasures have been concluded. Therefore, the Israeli regime, the terrorist Israeli regime, must be compelled to stop any further military adventurism against our interests. Certainly, in case of any any use of force by the Israeli regime and violating our sovereignty, the Islamic Republic of Iran will not hesitate a bit to assert its inherent right to give a decisive and proper response to it to make the regime regret its actions. This is an unchangeable decision. Mr. President, I would like to make it abundantly clear with a, and loudly in New York that Iran has always been a positive part of regional developments, treading the path of a stabilizing peace and lasting security, including the fight against terrorism, and will have no reservations nor compromise at all with any party over our national security and interests, as well as the collective security in the sensitive region of West Asia. The Security Council must compel the rogue and rebel regime of Israel to immediately stop the war in Gaza. I would like to assure you, Mr. President, that the Sun Republic of Iran will remain committed to promoting peace and stability in the region. As a matter of fact, when we talk about sustainable security and stability in the region and countering terrorism, it is impossible not to mention the very significant and prominent role played by Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps, otherwise known as IRGC, in the fight against terrorism. One cannot fail to praise the dedication and selfless sacrifices made by its commanders, especially Major General Qasem Soleimani and Generals Zahedi and Rahimi and their companions who were, who were killed in the recent missile attacks against our uh, mission in 
in Damascus. There is no doubt that sacrifices made by General Soleimani and IRGC in restoring peace to the region and rushing to the aid of the governments of people of Iraq and Syria is known to everyone. In this line, Iran's anti-terrorism military advisors will continue as mightily as ever their efforts to achieve lasting security in the region. Mr. President, the crimes of the Israeli regime during the past days in Gaza and other areas of occupied Palestine, as well as its attacks on other countries in the region, are indicative of several undeniable facts, including, number one, the attacks, the attacks of this regime have all it takes to be construed as the crime of aggression, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and crime of genocide, and therefore the regime and its allies are fully responsible and all and all the commanders, perpetrators and supporters of those crimes must be held accountable and brought to justice for their atrocious crimes. Number two, the essence and nature of the Israeli regime is based on aggression, occupation, terror and genocide. Therefore, all of its past actions, such as the so-called peace negotiations, the conclusion of the Abraham Accords and the normalization of relations were not only were not only peaceful but inherently and completely deceptive and as a result lacked any practical results to realize the inherent rights of the Palestinian nation. Number three the the developments and the resistance of Gaza in the last six months once again showed that Hamas as a liberation movement is nothing more than an illusion. The support of all nations of the region and the freedom seekers of the world for the praiseworthy resistance of the Palestinian nation also proved that this nation is not at all alone in realizing this inherent right. Israel is not a legitimate state. It is only an occupying power, and the passage of time does not and will not give legitimacy to the occupying power because based on the well-known principles of international law, the occupation of a land is temporary even if it lasts for decades. Mr. President, the Security Council is strongly expected to shoulder its responsibility and adopt a comprehensive and decisive resolution under the seventh chapter of the United Nations Charter on the following matters. Number one, establishing an immediate, complete, unconditional and permanent ceasefire in all areas of Gaza including in Rafah and the West Bank. Number two, full lifting of human blockade against Gaza. Number three, exchange of prisoners for humanitarian purposes. Number four, obligating the regime to immediately and completely and unconditionally withdraw all military forces and their warfare equipment from Gaza and the necessity of the safe return of the people to their areas and places. Number five, enforcing a comprehensive and immediate arms embargo against the Zionist regime. Six, supporting the legally binding provisional orders of the International Court of Justice and also providing the basis for the trial and accountability of all the all the commanders, perpetrators and supporters of the Israeli crimes in Gaza and other occupied Palestinian territories due to the due to widespread and heinous commission of genocide, the targeted killing of journalists, the UN humanitarian workers, and the 
repeated use of non-conventional weapons, including phosphorus bombs against the people of Gaza, and the repeated threats by the Israeli regime officials to use nuclear bombs in Gaza. I would like to reiterate that the root of the Middle East crisis lies in the occupation of the historical land of Palestine, and its comprehensive, just, and permanent solution also lies in providing the necessary ground for the complete and free realization of the inalienable right of the Palestinian people to self-determination through holding a referendum among all the original Palestinian residents, including Muslims, Christians, and Jews, with the help of the United Nations, leading to the establishment of an inclusive government in the historical and modern land of Palestine with al Ghos as its capital. Mr. President, I would like to conclude my remarks with the universal poem by the world-renowned Iranian poet Sa'adi, a piece of poem that is engraved on the carpet donated by Iran to adorn the wall of the United Nations building. The very same Iranian carpet that symbolizes the strategic patience, science, knowledge, art, and strength of Iran and all Iranians all over the world. Human beings are members of a whole in the creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, other members uneasy will remain. Thank you, Mr. President. Ramir Abdullahian. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Like and share the video, and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our African videos. It's the best way to support us.